Hey, it's Phoebe with Matt behind the camera and today we are staying at a beachfront resort and water park right here in the Philippines. Known for its incredible beaches, amazing food and rich history, Cebu is a coastal paradise. Now this is our first time visiting this region. We have never been here before. So I am really curious to see just what Cebu has to offer and what it's like to stay somewhere like this. We're fun until we hit the bottom. We are staying at the J Park Island Resort here in Mactan and it was about a 20, 25 minute drive from Cebu Airport. But we flew in with Cebu Pacific Air from Manila. Super easy to get here, like an hour flight. Now the resort is located right on the beachfront, which makes it the perfect backdrop for all your water sports. And it actually has this awesome water park. There's so many things you can do. We're gonna kick things off with getting sucked into the water slide because that is the happiest place on earth. Let's go. isn't quite your speed. You want something a bit more relaxed but still just as wet. This is the one for you. They have a, what do you even call this? A tube ride? You get in the tube and go around in a circle? Sounds great. Falling, falling down, fading. But I know, I know, I know, I know we can save it. Cause we're like Alpha and Omega. Even if we go all out and break us down. Work it out. You feel like Alpha and Omega. Even if we go out and break us down, we can work it out. Alpha and Omega. There is a lot to see and do around the park. We have only just scratched the surface. There's all kinds of water sports like parasailing. You can go snorkeling they have jet skis banana boat rides of course now we actually arrived yesterday and this morning we got to sneak in a few extra things they have the Pororo Park which is a kids room but we went in there and we had fun in the ball pit going down the slides jumping on all of the things they have rides it's a really cool spot and if you came here as a family you would absolutely love it now, given the sheer size of it, it should be no surprise there are a few restaurants on site as well and we're going to be checking them out, especially tonight, we're starting with one tonight, um, but for right now we are going to check out one of these beautiful villas the team have set up for us and we're going to have some drinks. you need to know about Filipino people. One, they are incredible hosts as we are discovering. Two, they are absolutely lovely. The happiest, kindest, sweetest people on the planet. And three, incredible performance. And we're about to see some proof of number three in action. kinds of cuisines on offer at restaurants spread across the resort. Tonight we are trying the Chinese restaurant Shanghai. Now I believe they're going to go for authentic Cantonese. I don't know what authentic Cantonese tastes like so to me it will be authentic. Let's go and try it. I'm about to make a very big call but I make it and I stand by it. This has been my favorite meal we've had in the Philippines. So that is our previous episode in Manila and this episode here so far this is my favorite. Chinese food can be hit and miss. <laughs> it can be very like rich, very oily, very I don't know, processed. It can make you have a bit of a funny tummy afterwards. This is so clean. It is so well done. I have loved absolutely everything. There's been no weird dish. 10 out of 10 would munch again. Good morning.
morning you guys so we are exploring Cebu a little bit more today and we're doing a guided tour checking out some of the major spots now as we know you may remember from modern history back at school the Philippines has a really interesting history with the Spanish and we are starting our tour today at one of those spots so we are at Fort San Pedro now this place is really interesting because it was built way back in the 1500s let me consult my notes May 8th, 1565, so it was originally built in 11 days and it was built out of logs after the arrival of Miguel Lopez de Legazpi right here in Cebu, so it's a really cool piece of history. Let's go check it out. Sabe mi sentimiento, siente mi amor, no me dejes sufrir mamá, quita mi dolor. City tour today is going to go from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. It is going to be a long, long day. I'm going to try and pace myself. That is stop one down. Te voy a dar mi corazón. Stop is at a spot that is a Cebu city icon and it is this beautiful kiosk with a red tile roof. If you look up Cebu, this is probably what you're going to see and it houses Magellan's Cross. Now, this cross was planted back in 1521 by Ferdinand Magellan while he was on his Spanish expedition. It's a pretty cool piece of history. This is a hard name for me to remember, so I'm going to read it out to you. We are at the Basilica Menor del Santo Niño de Cebu, and it was founded in 1565, and that makes it the oldest Roman Catholic church in the country, and an amazing piece of history. Let's go take a look. Para mí, eres todo lo que quiero, no hay más sin ti. No hay más sin ti, no. No hay más sin ti. Porque te necesito. Te necesito, mi amor. Te necesito. 20 pesos for some fresh pineapple. Go. Let's open this up and try it. So we are at a local market. It is a very big market, um, and we have come straight to the fruit section because I figured that's some nice, easy, fresh local stuff for us to try. Yum. Now, normally pineapple makes my tongue hurt, but the pineapple here does not. That is so good. It is so hot today, that is so refreshing. I feel like Cebu is great if you love the beach, if you love the tropical aspect, but also if you love history because it is such an old city. And we need to dig a little deeper into that history. Right now, we are at the oldest dated house in the Philippines, not just Cebu, the Philippines. Incredibly, it is preserved inside a warehouse. So we have pulled up. It looks like we're just at somebody's workshop and this incredible piece of history is in here. Let's go take a look. Yeah, so this house is the oldest dated house in the Philippines. So before the Jesuits, there were the group of priests who came here in the Philippines. They used to live in this house. It is beautiful. And so it was lost for a time and then they yeah. found it. Is uh -huh. that right? Yes. How did they find it? Um, when the present owner, Mr. Jamie C., he studied in one of the Jesuit schools wow. in Ateneo de Manila. So he came to, across a book of one of the Jesuit yeah. and there he found a familiar structure which is his house. one in your two eyes is too dry because what we haven't learned so much by the Spanish is the wood carving that's why the Cebu is uh, having an export and import by wood carving furnitures especially by the Spanish back in the days our dresses look like this is influenced so much with the Mexican because of the balloon if you have a shawl it means your wealthy family if you don't have a shawl it means your ordinary family this is the traditions that they have it but the Oh, 
All right, we are at the chocolate chamber. We are learning about chocolate. We are experiencing chocolate. This is cacao. Um, so if you've never seen it before in its original form, it comes off the tree. You've only seen it in the supermarket. This is what it looks like. And they're saying that you can tell if it's ready or not by whether or not it moves. So this one, I mean, you guys can't feel that, but the little pods inside move, like it's loose inside. And this one, no movement. Ready? Not ready. Basically, this is a traditional way of consuming hot chocolate here in the Philippines. Um, so it is basically just the chocolate, the cacao, in its raw form with water. It is very bitter apparently, and it smells chocolatey, and it also smells bitter. So let's try it. My first sip of that hot chocolate was so bitter, it was a shock to the system. But then we met the chocolate queen, Raquel. Now she has an incredible story. You should definitely look into her, check out the Chocolate Chamber website and learn everything you can about her. But she gave us a demonstration on how they actually make it, how she works with cacao, her life story, and it was incredible. But more than that, I got to see her beautiful skin and I was so taken by how stunning she is. And she said she drinks anywhere up to four or five cups of the cacao a day. So I had a second go at it so that I could soak in some of those good nutrients and great skin. And by the end of it, I was really enjoying it. I think I could really get into it. So I definitely recommend this experience. It was really lovely. And if at first, that first sip is bitter, stick with it. It gets better and you'll have great skin. It has been a really big day of sightseeing and I am absolutely exhausted. I am so happy to be back at the resort and I don't have to put any effort into eating tonight because we are having dinner at one of the on-site restaurants, Coral. Now this spot is located right along the beachfront. We got back a little too late for the sunset. I wish we were here just slightly earlier so we could have shown you. But the sunsets here are amazing. The staff do amazing ice cold beers, cocktails, drinks. They have a live singer. It's a really relaxed atmosphere. And tonight we are sampling traditional Filipino food. Now, this is based around the concept of a boodle fight. If you have never heard the term before, basically what it is traditionally, banana leaf is spread along the middle of a really big long table and loads of food like seafood, pork, all of that is put in the middle. And it came about during the Second World War and it was a way to unite the troops. And it didn't matter if you were a general, a foot soldier, whatever you were, when we sat down to eat, you were all equal. And we are doing a very elevated, very fancy version of that tonight. And the chef has gone all out. I am so happy to finally be able to show you our room. This is it and we have been loving it. It is so spacious and it honestly has everything you could need. The bathroom is a really good size. We have a shower and a bathtub in there. There's a toilet, a storage, sort of a wardrobe area and a great size basin. In the bedroom, we have a television, a little desk area. I've been using it to do my makeup, but you could use it for work if you needed. And we have twin beds in there too. The main living area is so spacious and it is really cozy. You have a kitchenette, a television and couch where you can sit and relax. And the aircon is freezing cold, which is perfect for this warm tropical weather and then this this is my favorite part of the whole room the views here are absolutely gorgeous and is the perfect spot to sit in the mornings and the afternoon and watch the sky change colors it is perfect at Cowhagen Island and we did a bit of a walk through the middle. Now this island is super 
super clean. You can tell the locals take a lot of pride in it. Everything is really well manicured and looked after. Um, lots of cute dogs and roosters and cats and little children running around. It's really sweet. You can tell it's a lovely local neighborhood of an island. Um, and we have pulled up to this beachside spot under this tent so we're nice and cool. And the locals have put together an incredible seafood feast to us. So feast for us. So we have crabs, fish. I'm just going to stick to the, the squid and the rice today. So let's give it a go. Oh, is that just for? No, that's okay. That's Tasty and spicy. Um, Jamie is willing to eat something I am not, and she's agreed to do it on camera. Over to you, Jamie. Okay, so here we have Alien versus Predator. Okay, so I'm guessing this is Apollo. This is what we eat, right? Yeah. Oh my god. Oh wow. She's so brave. What? Oh my god, it's back out. Oh wow. She's munching it. Mmm. Oh. It's like, um, it's like bitter. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you know what I'm so impressed with there? It was the fearlessness at which she attacked that. I would have nibbled it. I am taken by the way you just went, you know what? Is that like Yum. calamari texture? Yeah, it's like calamari texture, but but bitter. And yeah, if you, if you pussy out of it. Oh. Absolutely exhausted you guys. We've had a really big week or so starting in Manila and now here in Cebu. We've done so much, seen so much, experienced so much and we've loved it all. If you take nothing else away from this I hope that you've seen how beautiful the Philippines is and how wonderful the people are and we are so glad to be back in the Philippines again and seeing some new spots and with that that brings this week's episode to a close I really hope you have enjoyed it now if you don't already be sure to subscribe right now so you never miss a single episode and say hello in the comments below that is my boat I'm gonna go get on it um, I hope you have a great week ahead and if I don't no I will see you with a brand new episode next week love you